We have here very special words. They take place in the upper room. Judas has already left to get the Romans, and we know what happens next. So in a sense, this is the last will and testament of our Lord Jesus Christ. His final words, not just to those gathered in that upper room, but to all humanity and to you in particular. Imagine that, the high point, the final words. Clearly, they are full to the brim with meaning, with teaching, with wisdom, with God reaching through Christ to you in your life here today. So let's not assume we've heard it all before or that they're simple words. They carry a secret that we must unlock. If you were paying attention, you noticed that our scriptures today begin with Jesus answered. So he answers a question. No, the answer means we have to know what the question is. Here's the question. Why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Interesting question. How is it that some people get to know you in your spirit and others don't? Have you ever wondered that? Have you ever wondered why some people in your family have no interest in things of the spirit while you're hungry and yearning all the time? You know, I've told you before, if there was a nine-foot angel here behind me, there'd be no trouble convincing people, would there? But it doesn't work that way. Our Lord seems to want to work in quiet ways, in mysterious ways, in subtle ways. And we have to do what Israel was called to do. Hear, O Israel. Listen, O Israel. The great Shema prayer of all the faithful ones. We have to be vigilant. We have to pay attention. How is it that some can experience your presence, your help, your promises, your strength for the journey, and others can't? We're surrounded with a culture that can no longer recognize the Christ. Perhaps you've seen uh, he's an object of mockery on some new programming that's out there. The sense of the sacred has been lost. How is it that there are still a few, a remnant who in spite of their peers, in spite of the culture, in spite of the media, in spite of the pressure, to be like everybody else, still hunger and thirst for the deep things of the Spirit? In answer to that question, our Lord says, once again, throwing us off in the answer. If anyone loves me, he or she will obey me. Now that verb obey is a poor translation of the Greek terreo, which we've come across before. Quarry, I'm sure you remember. Terreo, what does it mean? It means keep my word. Let's try a better one. Love my word. Pay attention to my teaching. Hold dear, not forget. So when we are asking the Holy One, how can some know you and experience you and others can't? He says, you must love my teaching. What does that mean? Because here is the secret. How do we go about applying the teachings, choosing in the moment to not do it the same old way, to not be the same old person, to try in a new way. We have only one way to do that, and that is to love, to want to do it, to want to live in forgiveness, in mercy, in humility, to overcome the monsters within, for whom number one is the only issue, and Jesus follows that up by saying, My Father will love him and will come to him and make our home with him. The indwelling of spirit. No longer about the mind and the intellect and the dogmas, about the experience of Holy Spirit, of God's self in the privacy of our own 
psyches and lives. The indwelling, that is the promise. Earlier on, Jesus says, I will not leave you orphan. So I appeal to you in that place where you have felt like an orphan, even on Mother's Day, where you have felt all alone, lost and abandoned, hopelessly up against the wall, who has not had that moment? Maybe somebody here is in it right now. It's part of our human condition. Hear these holy words, these eternal words, I will not leave you orphan. I will not abandon you to the craziness of the world if you keep my teachings. If you try to apply them. You know, it's like a bicycle. Ever sat on a bicycle, put your feet on the pedals and not turn the pedals? What happens? Try to keep your balance in that position. There's no chance, right? You're going to take a fall. I said, you're going to take a fall. You're going to break something. You're going to hurt yourself just like we do emotionally, psychologically in this world. In order for that bike to work, you have to do what? Push down on the pedal, don't you? You have to make an effort. You have to do it. You have to love it. Do you realize this is the one thing that holds us together? This is why we are church. Because all of us, somewhere inside, some part of us, wants to keep that holy word. We're not here because we love the bylaws. We're not here because we want to go to board meetings. We're here because we're trying to live out the teachings of Jesus. And that is the secret to the Holy One dwelling in our lives. You know, psychologists trying to help out in one way or another, we poor humans with our problems, do you know they don't focus on the problem that we're focused on? They're focused on our attitude toward the problem. We are the problem. How we deal with things, how we see things, how we respond to things. And Jesus says, pay attention. Hold on to it. Don't forget it. Live it out. This morning I told our chapel folks, as we, we had some medical folks in there. We all know that a little campo fenique on a cut is going to burn, isn't it? And the doctor is going to tell you that's a good thing. In the spiritual world, it's got to burn just a little. It's got to burn the ego when you say you're sorry, when you don't try to have the last word, when you let go of that part of you that's got to have its own way, or else. May you not keep living in that misery, that misery for you and for everybody around you. It's time to love the teaching and to discover what is going to happen when we give it a shot when we try it out. Take that next opportunity, say, around the table this afternoon, when no doubt some ego is going to get offended about something. Hear those mighty words. If you love me, you will keep my word. If you love me, you will do this. You will apply this wisdom of God, and we will dwell with you. You will not be alone, unhappy, upset. Do you realize the only thing that stands between you and God in your life is you? Is the attitude, is the unwillingness to live it out. And Jesus then says, He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. Will not keep my teaching. You will know them by their fruits. You know, atheists love to point to the bloody history of religion and say, what's all that about? What kind of hypocrisy is that about? What is it about people who do not love the Word? And it's one thing to point to those who clearly aren't practicing it. 
But this is not about pointing to others, as you know. It's always about us, isn't it? It's always up close and personal. It's got to burn. We have to look at the parts of us that clearly do not love the teaching. Clearly do not love God. Would much rather have a fit. Would much rather live in that unregenerate ego that is only interested in itself. That has to be crucified in order to keep the word, in order to love the teaching. Christianity is a religion of sacrifice. Not outside sacrifice, inside sacrifice. But it's a sacrifice for your own healing. If your outer problems are not the issue, if it's how you deal with your problems, if the question is whether you love the teaching and want to apply it or don't, then the whole matter lies inside with you. Salvation and peace, shalom, is about being someone, as God wants us to be, who is okay, even when nothing around you is okay. The ego can't do that. The ego has to have it just the way it wants it. And I'm sorry to give you the news. The universe is not going to do what the little ego wants. You're going to be disappointed a lot. So instead of wasting your life banging your head on the wall, how about applying this wisdom, this mystery, this holy word that will give you a whole new life? Jesus goes on to say, the counselor, the advocate, the Holy Spirit will come to us. Now here's a teaching that can so easily have nothing to do with us. Especially in the King James Version, the Holy Ghost. That's a tough one. There's a ghost around. Casper, I don't know, what's the Holy Ghost? Spiritus Sanctus is the Latin. You know what advocate, counselor, means in Greek parakletos the one who joins alongside the comforter com fortis the one strength the one who joins you and joins strength with you to give you the power to go on how about that that we can sink our teeth into we could all use a little of that couldn't we a little assistance in this difficult world to lift us up out of the pit and Jesus says this is given to you it is good that I go because spirit is going to be accessible to you if if choir help me out you keep my word say it with me you keep my word you keep my word it's not going to happen otherwise you can have all the fancy talk you want. You can come to church for 50 years if you don't apply it, if you don't love it, if you don't want it. You will not receive the promises, the help, the power, the healing, the salvific experience of spirit coming into your life, indwelling you and lifting you up into a new place. It isn't that God doesn't want to come in. It isn't that you're condemned, it's that you lock God out by not seeking to live it. You know, in my line of work, it can get really distressing. Miles and miles of words and nothing happening. So I'm asking you today on Mother's Day, how about a little unconditional love from all of us here today? Just a little tiny pinch of it. Let's do something that has to do with keeping that word with being Christ-like, with letting Spirit enter us, use the friction of life as an opportunity not to be all upset, not to be full of rage, but to say, this is my chance to keep the Word, to live the Word, to pay attention to the teachings, and then the miracle will happen, my friends. Then you will find out what you can receive if you live it if you live it. And so our Lord says, peace I leave with you. I do not give you peace like the world. You know the world's peace is 
big bank account, as long as the global economy doesn't melt, having your own way as long as you can manage it, being in charge of everything for just a little while, it's temporary, it's fragile, it's bogus. The peace of Christ is that peace that will stand strong no matter what. And it's available to you right now. It isn't a fantasy. It isn't a belief system. It's an experience in your life, at the heart of your storms. That peace of Christ, that peace he manifests when they tried to stone him to death in Nazareth and he walked through them in peace. A peace the world does not know. A peace that is rooted in God, in spirit. A peace that will carry you on forever in the joy of the Lord, regardless of what happens. The promises of God here for today. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, help us to hear your words, to apply your teachings, to become these words that we might indeed shine that light in the world and find our true purpose. We pray this in your holy name. Amen.